Hello and welcome. This is Springtime in Kotlin episode 7. In this episode, I'm going to talk about Kotlin interoperability with Java. There are multiple aspects that we can cover in this topic. First, Spring is a Java framework and it was designed with the assumption that you use it to create applications with Java. For instance, Spring assumes that the Java classes implementing the components in the application are not final. In Java, classes are not final by default, but in Kotlin, the situation is the opposite. So we either need to make sure that the classes are marked with the open keyword when we write code in Kotlin, or we need to make sure to use the Spring Kotlin compiler plugin to open the classes in the build time for the Spring framework to be able to generate the proxies. The plugin configuration is exactly what Spring Project Wizard generates in the pom.xml or build.gradle files. Since the process is automated, we don't really pay much attention to it. However, we have to account for this if we try adding Kotlin to the existing Java and Spring project. In the previous episode, I demonstrated how to add Kotlin in the existing Java Maven project, and there I configured Spring Kotlin compiler plugin. Okay, we have added Kotlin to Java project, now what? Most likely you won't be converting all your Java code to Kotlin immediately. You would probably write new code in Kotlin and reuse the existing Java classes. And maybe sometimes you would convert some of your existing Java classes to Kotlin if your changes are affecting this Java code and uh, you have time for converting this code. But most likely you just want to reuse it. In Kotlin documentation, you can find all the details about how to call Java from Kotlin and Kotlin from Java. And in this video, I want to focus mostly on the cases when you want to call Java from Kotlin because this scenario will be relevant for you when you add Kotlin code to the existing Java project. In general, the process should be quite straightforward with a few conventions to follow. You can see the documentation covers pretty long list of the cases. So in this video, I will only talk about those that I think will be relevant immediately or very soon after you decide to use Kotlin in your Java project. The first and the simplest thing to get used to is that Kotlin has properties, so we use the property success syntax instead of calling the getters and setters. Let me show you an example. Here I have an owner instance and I'm referring to a property called city. If I want to assign a value to that, I just type the assignment operation and if I want to uh, call a getter I just refer to the property by the name for instance if I want to print it behind the scenes it will still refer to a getter or to a setter and not directly to the field second some commonly used function names may collide with the Kotlin keywords Therefore, we need to use the back quotes to escape these names and make sure that they are not recognized as the keywords. The two examples of this would be as and is keywords. Next, null safety is actually a big topic in Kotlin and Java interoperability story. In Java, any object can be null. In Kotlin, nullability is part of the type system where we distinguish whether or not the declared variable can contain a null value. And if we invoke a Java code that returns a value, it may contain null, but the compiler will not warn you immediately about this. For the Kotlin compiler, the type that returns from a Java function is a so-called platform type for which the null checks uh, are relaxed. In the early days of Kotlin, the compiler marked the types that returned from Java code as nullable, and this turned out to be a bit impractical as the code tended to get polluted with the null checks. So this is something you need to account for when building the boundary between Kotlin and Java code in your application. Let's see an example. Here I have a Java function that can produce null as a return value. And if I try calling this function from a Kotlin code, and if I don't check for the null properly, then this program will produce a null pointer exception. Let's run it. And this null pointer exception will not happen at the variable assignment line, but only when you try actually using this value. For instance, when I try printing this value, I will see the exception. I can try specifying the variable type explicitly as non-nullable. 
and then the null pointer exception occurs at the assignment point. But if I specify this type as nullable, then the program will just print null as a result. So here we rely at the runtime too much. And it is possible to improve this code to help the compiler by using the nullability annotations. Let's try that. For instance, if I add nullable annotation to the Java function declaration, it helps the Kotlin compiler to make the decision about nullability. And if I expect a non-nullable value in Kotlin, the compiler will say that there is a type mismatch. Of course, we can fix it by just removing this type declaration here and uh, the type will be inferred. But let's experiment with the parameter. Currently, we supply string as a parameter and that is a platform type. And we know that the null checks for the platform types are relaxed. So if I use null as a parameter here, the compiler will not warn me in any way. So how can I improve this? I can declare this parameter as not null using, by using the annotation. In that case, the compiler will let me know that I cannot use null here. So the nullability annotations make your Java code friendlier for use with Kotlin. But what does it have to do with Spring Framework, you might ask? Well, the Spring Framework, Spring Data and Project Reactor actually use nullability annotations in their APIs. And Spring provides its own annotations that leverage JSR 305 meta annotations to indicate nullability in Java. And Kotlin compiler supports JSR 305 too. And this is something that we also configure in the configuration file when we configure Kotlin for the project. Now, a quick note on exceptions. In Kotlin, all exceptions are unchecked, meaning that the compiler does not force you to catch any of them. So when you call a Java method that declares a checked exception, Kotlin does not force you to do anything. So calling Java from Kotlin is generally not a problem at all. There are very specific corner cases with the generics, but the team is slowly improving the integration with Java. And today I would say that the situations where you need to use some workarounds are very rare. This is just a part of the story though. Sometimes, after you implemented some new functions in Kotlin, you might need to call them from your Java code. This is where you might need to do a bit more work because Kotlin syntax is much more expressive. We need to either follow some conventions or instruct the compiler to generate the bytecode that could be seen from Java. For instance, if we need to call a top-level Kotlin function from Java, we need to enclose this function into a class. By default, the Kotlin compiler generates a class name based on the file name suffixed with kt. So if I define a function in a file called interoperability.kt, then calling this function from Java will look like a static function invocation on the interoperability kt class. But we can use special annotations to amend the generated class name. For example, I want my class to be called utilities instead of the interoperability kt. Then I can use file jvm name annotation and supply the name I want it to have. And then I can refer to the class by the new name. And there are more places where you might want to use annotations to instruct the compiler, uh, for example, when using the default argument values in the function. Let me demonstrate this. I will add a parameter with a default value to my Kotlin function. When calling this function from my Kotlin code, I can skip specifying the parameter. So I don't have to specify any parameters here and in this case, the default value will be used. However, this feature does not exist in Java, so we have to specify the parameter value for invoking this function from Java. To call this function without specifying the parameter, we need a corresponding overloaded version of this function. For that, I'm going to add the at JVM overload 
annotation. In this case, Kotlin compiler will generate all the overloads and uh, the version without the parameter will be visible from Java. Let's verify that. Here it is. Okay. Finally, let's talk about the exceptions again. Uh, since Kotlin doesn't support checked exceptions, we are not forced to wrap Java code invocations into try-catch blocks when using Java classes in Kotlin code. However, we might want to convey the information about possible exceptions that need to be handled when calling Kotlin code from Java. For that, we can inform the compiler to generate the appropriate method signatures in the bytecode when compiling Kotlin functions. And this is made possible by uh, adding the throws annotation to the function declaration. In this case, when we call the Kotlin function from Java, the compiler will see that there is a function call with a checked exception and thus it needs to be handled properly. Now let's sum it up. In this video, I covered some of the aspects of Kotlin Java interoperability and hopefully the examples I showed will be relevant when you start adding Kotlin to your Spring project. The list of examples is not exhaustive by any means, so I suggest you check out the specific documentation page to learn more about the details as you work with the mixed Kotlin and Java code base. So let me know in the comments if this was useful. Thank you for watching and have a nice Kotlin.